So good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Steve Hybrox again. We're uh, uh, together with Taxera Technologies. Uh, we have with us uh, Paul and Florent. Um, and uh, um, Florent is uh, and Paul are the co-owners. Where Florent is uh, doing the relationship uh, management with clients and dealing with project management. And Paul is uh, has has the tax background uh, to uh, accommodate clients on the more technical issues, and they will share with us in our first uh, of the second webinar series for Lego on tax, building blocks on tax. Um, they will kick off uh, the the session we have this fall. So welcome, Paul, and welcome, Floran. Um, and I would like to give the floor to you and probably, Rosanna, if we can move to the next slide. Floran, you uh, want to take off? Yep. Thank you very much for the introduction, Steve. So uh, I'm Florent. I'll be leading the, the first half of this presentation. And then Paul will take the second part uh, a bit more on the technology part. So. Uh, welcome to the, the webinar. Uh, it's all about how do organizations deal with reshaping the tax function of the future and uh, how can technology help the transition to a digital tax function and most importantly, how. Um, what we've seen um, in the past few years is new disruptive and uh, we say constantly evolving technology that is rapidly uh, transforming businesses. So companies are investing in, in like all these buzzwords, but big data, automation, artificial intelligence solution uh, to improve and to try to improve their business capabilities. Um, I'm sure that you've also experienced this, but the, the, the pandemic has also forced companies to, to, to accelerate the existing digitalization plans um, to have the data, to improve the processes, to make them continuously available and to operate in um, what we'll say secure manner for the continuity of uh, the business. So this is really what we're going to analyze as we assess as business model disruption and transformation, um, which brings it to technology because technology will bring new opportunity and the risk, I would say, that comes with it as well. So as business transition to a new uh, digital operating model, um, the structure of finance, accounting, and legal requirements for the tax data is evolving rapidly. And uh, the tax function also has to, to respond uh, quickly. However, the, the tax leaders, um, and I've seen we've done a few surveys with our clients as well, the, the tax leaders have reported widespread um, unpreparedness for digital transformation due to a lack of, um, let's call it tech savviness. And um, sometimes we, there's a lack on clear strategy or budget for the digitalization of the business and the tax function itself. So often the tax function is not included in the, the broader uh, digital transformation, the digital journey that the, the multinational is following. And um, business are initiating this transformation and sometimes tax is not always included in this. So that would lead it to a, a lack of readiness for the, the tax function. And um, this could, should be a priority or this could be a priority for, for tax leader, given that the tax authorities around the world are um, actively incorporating new technologies into their tax audit and their enforcement program. So um, we see, and I think everybody has seen in the, in, in the webinar, that tax authorities in, uh, and we're going to call it the tax administration 3.0, the tax authorities in many countries are learning new skills, um, talking about data scientists, new technologies that are related uh, for, for this, uh, this scope. And they, the authorities are the tax authorities, they are obtaining far more information um, through transparency regulation. Uh, they are applying technologies in innovative ways to analyze all this information that is being collected, which um, there is a, it is a great um, uh, bedtime reading, if you ask me. Um, this is further illustrated. Um, in, the, in the paper that has been produced by the OECD, 
for the, it's called the Tax Administration 3.0, and it was called the, the Digital Transformation of the Tax Administration. And in it, they, they really reinforce the conclusion that uh, tax administration will only accelerate the focus on, on, on real-time data, on driven tax compliance, and uh, getting more and more information and, and uh, real-time information as well. So that gives us, that gives, and I hope everybody has seen this, that gives us the, the immediate feeling and the need to act on this. And uh, here after, we basically try, we try to, to propose uh, some of the measures that tax department can take to, to move forwards and, um, and not to fall behind the, the digital transformation waves that is obviously taken by the organization, but that the tax department could enjoy as well and to to enhance their the function. So let me propose that to you. Um, so what's a, a tax operating model for, for the next generation? Um, we see that the manager, tax manager, they often, often, they're often confronted by the, the, the high cost of digital transformation, by the fact that the capital that is needed to invest in this transformation and the transformation of the tax department is not always available, or it's not in the budget at the beginning. And we see a gap in expertise as well and in capacity due to the need uh, for a new set of skills. And there's also cost cutting measures. So in most cases, it has become evident that the current way of working will no longer suffice. And tax leaders have no alternative but to rethink their current operating model. So these different tax operating models, which can range from maintaining all activities in-house, supported by technology to outsourcing, uh, or activities to third parties. Co-sourcing, outsourcing are ways to access an innovative technology solution, and, uh, and that brings as well lower cost. Uh, maybe we can run uh, the, the poll as well. Uh, we've made a few questions for, for our poll. Um, if you guys can please run this. Great stuff, thank you. So we, we've put down some some questions. Um, I'll give you a minute to answer it. Is to to get your 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 view on this. Um, we'll have a few questions like this through the through the webinar, so that you can um, you can give us your your impression and your views on the these tax technologies and in the cloud. So when we talk about cloud, we really mean in the cloud. Um, and it's interesting to see what what's your opinion on the. Um, cloud and technologies and securities, or how do you, you see it yourself? Maybe. Maybe it needs to show the appropriate security. Exactly. So we, we see that um, um, that's at least there's always most of the companies and the organization part of this poll uh, are keen to to see what can be proposed and can be uh, used and what can the cloud propose to 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 the organization. That's good. So I'll continue on this. Um, what we see in the digital world as well is this additional relevant question and can this activity be automated? I mean, carried out by machines, basically. And that's also questions that people sometimes look because they have cost reductions, they have less uh, stuff, and they look to automate it. So we're talking about uh, RPA as well. Um, so having access to technological capabilities, skills, resources, um, without necessarily having to bear the investment cost, uh, requires to implement and to maintain their own system, technology and application, is something that we can look into. Um, here we'll talk a bit, a bit more about the data model impact. Um, accessing good quality, good data quality, is consistently, consistently viewed as a key challenge for the tax department. Many companies recognize that their existing data management processes and technologies are outdated. And this, we've seen it because we work with tax departments uh, and we, we get this, this feedback and this, uh, this, this, this information. Um, new technology will offer 
better, faster, perhaps cheaper way of doing things, um, factors that drive the effort of pursuing the, the best available solution. However, no technology solution is worth investment without first looking into the data model. What is my data? What am I trying to get out of this? And there's no efficient automation without a, a with an unstructured data. So one area in the data management with significant benefit is the cloud-based enterprise resourcing planning, which is UARP. Um, in the past, there were reluctance around the level of security, around the data available in the cloud. The cloud-based ERPs have become uh, more and more present. Uh, they've, they conquer the terrain due to benefits like reduced complexity and lower implementation cost. So we moved from an ERP that was on your server, on your premises, to in the cloud. And we've seen it as well. Even SAP is pushing for this. Um, this shift to the cloud-based cloud ERP uh, may provide the opportunity to structure and to standardize the data and is also a promise for a single source of truth for the data, which should or will save uh, the tax department, uh, which currently spend quite a significant amount of time doing the heavy lifting in, um, in terms of manually cleaning the data for various tax processes. Um, tax leaders can already start imagining a world where the team will be spending less time in data analysis and more time on analytics, scenario planning, and um, providing value-added input to the business. Uh, maybe we can run our second poll here, uh, which is a little bit more um, related to the subject of interest as well, which is the invoicing mandate uh, around the globe. So when we talk about invoicing, we talk about safety, we talk about uh, continuous transaction control, we talk about e-fatula, uh, uh, we talk about note fiscal, uh, all those um, um, wonderful data integration that are being done with the tax authorities. So it's interesting because we see, and we are quite keen to know your feedback on this because we see um, clients and one of them that always comes out is Brazil. There you go. So 63% know it's a real struggle to implement or change mandate. So that's what we've seen. That's how we, one of the, so last time I was talking to a CFO uh, of a big one, a big organization, and he was like, tell me about it. And Brazil and Note Fiscal, it has cost us a fortune to implement it and it's not really working properly. And because you get different region, different counties, um, you've got a new one coming as well, Romania. So it's a lot of things and you can see that uh, it's also a concern to, to, to your organization. So let's take Laurent, this. Uh, Laurent, uh, maybe a question on this, um, uh, because if I see the response, uh, there's a hesitation on the cloud. Is it really secure, huh? the first poll? And yeah. now we're struggling with this e-invoicing, which seems to impose different uh, requirements in, on, a, on a country by country based approach uh, again. So, so, so the, the, the question is a little bit, if you apply these digital transformations on a country by country base, which a lot of, a lot of uh, in-house tax people are forced to simply because of a lack of budget or even a lack of time or too late notice uh, from the local country. Uh, how can you how can you avoid you first are stepping into um, a country solution uh, with with all the the, the challenges uh, which came out of the poll? Uh, how can you avoid that uh, that that you take a more a more global approach? Great question. Um, maybe, I mean, I was, I've been speaking uh, most until now. I don't know if, uh, Paul, you want to jump in as well a little bit? Yes, yeah, I'll do that. Can you hear me okay, Florent? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. 
Perfect. Now, Steve, I think it's a very, very valid point, Steve, and I think later on we will show you a little bit about our platform and how it works. And I think that's exactly the issue. I think you've hit the nail on the head, Steve, is that first of all, there's a security issue or there's the perception of a security issue. And I think how you how you manage the data, how you secure that data, how you hold that data is very relevant to uh, allaying those fears of, of uh, cloud. The, the fact of the matter is most of us, whether we know it or not, already using the cloud in our private lives and organizations too. You know, it may be that um, part of it, you may think that you may have something on premise, whether it be your email system or not, but the, the vast majority is already on the cloud. And the second point I think that's that uh, I would say that's even more valid is that currently the approach still tends to be on a on a country by country basis. The the finance teams, if they haven't been um, globalized or centralized into a, into a more shared service type organization with a with a global view, are still operating at the at the um, at the country level. That is to a certain extent what happens with the the tax teams as well. So what you then learn up from a technology perspective with these local solutions. And that kind of works um, in the short term where you can deploy, uh, whether it be Mexico, CFDI, or Ifatura in, in Italy, or you know, French FEC. Uh, the problem becomes as, as your multinational is operating in all these countries, as the tax authorities become ever more demanding, the companies can, just cannot respond quick enough with these local solutions. So I think the idea is that, you know, even alluding to your paper that you wrote, your white paper, Steve, when you talk about um, generation uh, 4.0, it's really having a platform approach or a global approach to this issue. So you can respond quicker. The user experience is globalized and centralized, and you can cope within a single platform that can cope with things from Brazil, not the fiscal, to CFDI, to EFATURA, to the SAFT deployments. So I think the platform approach with a fully integrated approach um, takes away a lot of this, but we are still, I would say this is a journey rather than an end game right now. Perfect. Back Thanks, to you, Paul. Florian. Thank you. Um... So here is um, say like this is some 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 suggestion and ideas that we, we we've put down as well. So um, if we talk here, we talk about the team, and then after we'll talk more about the the technology part. So to to respond to the tech, the digital challenges that we have or that the, the, the clients have, um, the tax leaders they need to focus on obviously reskilling and upskilling initiative for both the existing personnel and the new hires. So um, flexible careers, collaborative minds will be the key to an, uh, a new um, tax digitization journey. Um, obviously, project management, data analytics, automation, programming skills, that will enhance the tax processes and consequently the tax output. Um, but the implementation of the, the technology solution, where we talk about uh, data cleansing, uh, workforce uh, workflow, um, management application, tax software uh, into the tax function that has demonstrated the need for a, a broader variety of skills. So the tax technical professionals are vital, vital because of the, the experience with the existing tax department processes and the knowledge of the tax law and regulation. But also and increasingly, um, tax professional will be asked to work with other professionals, not only in the IT, but also with the data people, the data scientists, and all the, the other data professionals that are across the different function. And one of these challenges is that the professional from different uh, diverse uh, educational background, they don't always speak the same language. Um, tax professionals don't always speak IT or data science, and IT professional or data scientists, um, they don't always speak the tax language. As a result, there is a growing need for tax professionals who have such a soft skills. We can manage the tax department automation, save as middlemen or interpreters for other team members, um, and act as what we're going to call business partners. Um, the job would be to help the other parties articulate the needs, the concerns, and to help translate ideas into actionable uh, steps that can lead to the desired outcomes. Such departments and some tax departments already have dedicated tax professional. Those are the big ones, and you're going to call them uh, tax and technology or tax uh, tax product manager. Um, and they interface between the IT 
to oversee tax and vice versa, so tax and technology, and they look to, for opportunities to improve and to innovate. Um, so we might want to learn from others within the organization. Um, another way to upskill the task team is also to assign a team to learn how the other area of the companies and even all the tax department in PS companies. When we see, um, we like to put our, our clients in touch with the other one to see how they work or how they've implemented such solution or how they how they cope with you know a complicated uh, um, uh, e-invoicing country. Um, and how do they pilot or they pilot the digital tools or they make automation processes? So the technology that will become mainstream in the next what, two to four years is likely already being evaluated somewhere in the business. So revisiting the team may also mean being more inclusive of automation or what we're going to call machines, um, open mind, agile, collaborative people that do not shy away from including automation. Um, such as RPA, so we said, uh, which is uh, the robot process automation. AI is also quite good, so we, we're working on this, um, and uh, in, um, that will give a, a, an important acceleration to the, the business. Um, I think this is that's what we see for for, for upskilling the team and the revisitation of the, the team. Um, but the other part is is the IT. So, uh, Paul, do you want to talk a little bit about the the IT part, maybe? Yes, thanks for thanks for handing over. So um, before we, we we get to the interesting meat of the presentation, which is to really show you a little bit about tax technology, etc., we just kind of wanted to give a little bit background of what can be the the current status today in terms of major ERP transformations. With a you know traditional organization when they started ERP transformation, you know tax was not always at the table, and if they were at the table, very often they bo were brought in at the last minute in terms of uh, the firefighting or the OTC processes have been designed, the P2P processes have been designed, all the configuration uh, has been done and then kind of tax was uh, brought in at the very last minute to kind of validate those processes and this in itself meant that you know old processes or in uh, incorrect processes were brought into the into into the new ERP processes, the new business processes and uh, what we see is that more and more this is, is it not only needs to change but it is changing perhaps not as fast as it should and this is potentially um, you know it's an extension of what Florent is saying do the does, does IT actually understand the complexity of tax and uh, coming from an IT background I'd say we don't um, but at the same time does tax have the necessary skills to 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 come into IT and that's that's just as complex so um, I think what really works well and what we've seen from experiences is business partnering, tax joining at the table at an early part of the program rather than as an afterthought. You know, and I think this is also about the tax function, you know, kind of standing up and wanting to be part of these programs, not just finance and and, and operations or global operations, the supply chain folks, um, and, and so on. So I think there's also a the onus on on the tax function to to be part and to and to be part of these these big programs that drive the business transformation and that they end up with the results that they want with the enabling. We know technology should always be an enabler uh, rather than um, pulling um, the solution from a from a tax perspective. And by having that and having the tax being part of that. Uh, that design being part of, of that uh, steering committee be part of all these programs both at an analyst level at a, at the steering committee level we'll end up with a with a with a solution where um, the design of the tax the tax functions their business processes both indirect tax withholding tax all the reporting are embedded into the process rather than as an afterthought um, because to change things once it's all done, it uh, really becomes problematic. And, and then last but not least is that, you know, we, we, as we've all experienced this, is the tax authorities are becoming ever more, I wouldn't like to say the word invasive, intrusive, but they are requesting more and more data from all of us, uh, faster, quicker, and, and the, the data, the data, the size of the data, the complexity of the data is ever growing. You know, we, we talk about SAFT, you know, it's generally seen as a, an easier model to implement really, uh, given that it's not real time, 
time. But in some countries, the, the level of detail going to SAFT is much greater than the real-time invoice exchange. You know, as you know, with, with Romania at the moment, the data that's been requested is, is incredible. Probably the, the, the greatest level of the data that's been requested in any of the SAFT mandates out there. If you actually look at the schema for, for some of the, the production and the material data, they're actually wanting every product that you make, they're even wanting to know the cost of that product. Um, at the management accounting level, uh, again, not something that we often see is, um, you know, they're wanting to know management, your management accounting structure. So what are your profit centers? What are your cost centers? How do they relate to each other? They want more and more data. They want it faster. They want it quicker. So we really need to embed the tax function uh, uh, and the tax technology folks early into the into the process design the tax function into into the into the business processes and have the it uh, really um, you know built to support those needs and in terms of you know kind of closing out to the tax authorities before we go into um, into into the taxera component of this webinar is really to to you know the the complexity of what tax authorities are, uh, are doing is getting ever greater. For example, one one conversation with the, with the tax authorities that we had recently is they were even talking about um, uh, with real-time exchange, telling companies what VAT codes should be used and what the rate should be applied. So imagine where uh, you have a real-time uh, data exchange with tax authorities and that they are bypassing the tax engines of today and actually telling you what tax you should be charging on each and one of your transactions. So, you know, what we don't see today is probably what's coming tomorrow from the tax authorities. And I think we just need to be prepared we need to get ready with people skills, with technology, and so forth. So, um, yeah, Paul, I think... uh, Paul, just a few few points on that. Uh, I, I think uh, what, what we heard you guys say is there's a lot of human hurdles. So, um, as the three of us talked uh, talked this through, the the whole concept of try to inspire people to get them on board, try to have a, an accurate definition of of the process you're running before you pull technology in as, as an enhancer or facilitator. I think that's that's the message we all share. I think what what I also heard you say is co-compliance process where corporates just start handing over data sets to the tax authorities on an on, on almost or, or even real-time exchange base uh, is not too far away. And, and that has serious consequences for tax data architecture and, and, and management. Um, the, the, but, but I think what, what is also not only a threat to the in-house tax, but also an opportunity, if you're sitting already on real-time data, you're obviously a, a much better co-pilot to the business than ever before. Huh? If you if you want to make an impact as tax, you want to be the co-pilot to your business colleagues you don't want to be the compliance department who gets the data uh, 15 minutes too late or 15 months later uh, who is in the basement doing the compliance uh, nothing wrong about compliance but also the upgrade of tax um, you're looking at a serious opportunity to upgrade the profile of the in-house tax department within the, the firm and, and typically that would attract much more uh, uh, people capacity and, and sometimes even more budget to to do that digital transformation, which for not a lot of in-house tax people is that easy to build a business case on uh, these days. Just just as an add-on uh, to what you just said, Paul. No, no, perfect, Steve. You, you, you put it across much better than you, but you're spot on and I agree with everything. You know, we, we recently talked to a cloud that a client was kicking off a major um, ERP transformation program and, and tax are not at the table. And, you know, part of our remit was, you know, we need to get this team on board here. And that was one example that, you know, we saw where tax were, were, were not in the, in the discussion. It was surprised in, in 2021. And, and, you know, a second client, a large multinational is that tax were actually not even responsible for the VAT submission reports. This was actually dealt uh, by the finance function. So there's still a way to go there in terms of organizational structure, but um, I couldn't agree with you more, Steve. 
Okay, so um, coming back to, to now with Taxera and, uh, and the cloud is um, what we uh, wanted to, to discuss with you today is the opportunity the, the cloud can bring in terms of organization, systems, legal, and we'll go to a little bit more detail later on, um, a global SaaS system, which is software as a service, as well as the vision in terms of um, what a platform like Texera or a cloud offering can bring to you is the ability to, to handle complex business models where you um, integrating this into a shared service or a GBS model by driving substantial client service, uh, savings. You know, early on we talked about having local uh, solutions for 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 every country or at least for a region. What uh, these uh, large uh, cloud solution platform can bring you is these efficiencies through the consolidation of these different tax mandates and tax models into a single platform on the cloud and the ability to, to do this on the cloud greatly facilitate points number two is where you, you have to handle uh, we have the ability to handle complex IT architecture. You know, when you have an on-premise system that you have a set of programs and set of capabilities embedded into a single ERP system, the minute you have a second or a third ERP system that is of the same uh, nature, such as an SAP SAP system or an SAP Oracle system, that ABAP add-on or that add-on that is that is bolted onto your system or it's added into your technical landscape makes it a lot more difficult or almost impossible to actually be able to connect to to multiple uh, IT systems. You know, very few companies have the ability to run the entire global tax uh, requirements on a single IT system. So the ability to handle multiple ERP systems is something that you have to seriously consider from an architecture uh, perspective when you're coming to consider your, your tax technology of the future. You know, you should consider the ability to, you know, I'm running 80% of my company on SAP, but the rest of the 20% is maybe on a local ERP system in, in Chile or in, uh, in Guatemala or in Bolivia or in South Africa, you know, or any other country, and you should really consider the ability to, to integrate into the systems. And cloud technology by nature is, is very often much easier to integrate these multiple systems where you can get a totalistic picture of your, of your tax function rather than having um, just a one set uh, of a local solution, which then holistically, you, it becomes very difficult to look at your, your entire spectrum of data. You know, the the other key aspect of, of, of the cloud is uh, is the ability to meet, and as we saw in the uh, in the in the questionnaire early on, 63% of people um, mentioned that they're really struggling. It's difficult to maintain these these uh, mandates to deploy them and when they change them it becomes uh, very difficult to then to, to stay up to date. Uh, Florence mentioned today uh, multiple times for example that we have Romania, Romania coming on the 1st of January. Now the legislation is not yet 100% uh, laid out but a cloud provider or you know that certainly we at Texera already 90% of the way building the solution which should mean come the 1st of January you're able to deploy in time because very often these fixes that come for on-premise systems that the providers are waiting for the very last minute to build that solution this is not a speciality and very often companies get squeezed for time and then just moving across to the left hand side when we talk about SaaS as a global platform and this is really what we we offer this is really the strength of Texera we, we've looked at the at, uh, at the, the tax function holistically specifically in direct tax and it's not just about the e-invoicing mandate is how do we reconcile how do we maintain this data uh, conversions between these multiple systems you know how do we accelerate that month in process given that in Spain I'm sending the, the government e-invoicing data, I'm sending financial data through my general ledger and I'm sending them a, a, a VAT return and before I send that I need to reconcile all this data which in most cases some companies are doing it, they're generally doing it manually or they're not doing it at all and how do I do that consistently through that process through a global cloud platform because if I do it in Spain I want to do it in Mexico, I want to do it in Germany, I want to do it in Italy. So we all always take this global approach and companies should consider this in terms of ensuring that they, have, they stay compliant and that they facilitate and bring that efficiencies to the table. And um, last but not least is really this um, 
companies are looking for, you know, our clients are looking for a global platform, a single stop shop, so to speak, so as to, um, you know, they want to get away from this model of having a solution per country that is not only difficult from a tax perspective or the tax function, but from an IT too. If you're an IT organization, that having to support different tool sets um, for every single country it becomes almost impossible to manage that. The cost is incredibly high, but also the management of each of those vendors, each of those solutions becomes more and more complex as the tax authorities require more and more data. So in terms of leveraging the cloud today, and then I'll just like to close off with that first question in terms of the first address, that first concern on the um, on security in terms of the cloud. Um, when you are looking at a global platform, I think it's not only important that it's on the cloud, um, you, we urge our our clients that uh, to look at whether a platform is really a cloud-based platform, and it's a very thin line. Has it where is it an on-premise application that's been moved to the cloud, which is doing exactly what the on-premise system does, or is it something that's been built for the cloud? And this is it's fundamentally different, and and uh, the issues that uh, that systems that are brought into the cloud that are not native for the cloud it means that security can be an issue the ability to to have speed flexibility and agility in the cloud are really um, brought to the forefront when products and applications are not designed and built for the cloud so i just wanted to give you a quick overview why you should leverage the cloud today you know the complex it architecture rapidly and changing legal requirements and so forth and maybe this is a good time to take uh, up another poll i can have some water and uh, get you guys to maybe go through our third poll of the day so um, what we wanted to understand is uh, you've expressed uh, that you may be struggling uh, with these e-invoicing mandates and all the, the the surrounding activities. You know, do you do this in-house? Is it outsourced or is it hybrid model? Okay, so all the workers, uh, tax and IT full in house. Okay, um, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised by that, but nevertheless, um, it's interesting to notify. So 71% everything is done in house. Fantastic. Okay, so if we can uh, then move. Paul, may, may I ask what, why are you surprised? Because I see a lot of corporates uh, really believe in, in the concept that if finance it and tax work in a good tandem with each other uh, and uh, they can uh, they can leverage from existing digital transformation tools already in place for finance for example so uh, you seem to be surprised that the percentage yeah. is so high for for what reason yeah it would be great i don't know if it's possible to get the survey up i guess it's um for me it's uh it's uh, it's in support of the poll number two so um in terms of we really really struggle 63 percent are really struggling but yet 71 percent are saying in us i would i would i would think well if i'm struggling i would probably have outsourced a little bit more or have an hybrid model. So I, it, I'm not surprised with the answer in its own. I guess it's just in comparison to poll two is it's difficult to do the stuff, but we're doing it in our, so it, it'd be interesting to, you know, we don't have the time to delve a little bit more into that, but that's that's my surprise. I'm not well, completely I, I, surprised, but. <laughs> I understand. Well, that 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 sort of relates to the, the, the challenge I see in how tax teams have in mobilizing enough funds to to involve outside parties uh, so that there's a how do you sell it internally and what's your return on investment you can show to the cfo eventually to free up budget for uh, for the digital transformation of a platform like taxi taxi so i guess that's yeah. one one of the explanations so people start doing a lot of stuff in-house and then 
you you inevitably run, and that's what I'm having discussions with corporates on now, into the make or buy the decision. And and sometimes uh, buy is better than make. Sometimes make is better than buy. So I I think the criteria around make or buy, however, are still very fuzzy uh, from the outset. So th that requires a clear digital transformation roadmap, not only for indirect tax, but for all tax means across the world. Uh, and the criteria in which scenario do we uh, make it ourselves uh, without the run, running the risk that it is obsolete uh, five, five days later, or it's too siloed, too countrified, uh, and therefore doesn't uh, give us the leverage in other countries. So, so, so I guess that those factors won the funds and mobilize the funds on, on the ROI business case. Uh, and and the, the second point is, is as important uh, that you, um, uh, the make or buy decision criteria are not, not always that well defined or, or cultivated yet at this point in time. So I'm just, a little bit of gas well work uh, on, on the answers of this audience, but this, this, these are certainly explaining some of the responses we got today and then talking to, uh, to, to corporates. No, Steve, I completely agree. And I think the business case, thank you for bringing up a really valid point. And what we see is that the business case in terms of uh, this space at the moment, you know, it, it, it can, it, it is always adjustable, especially with, with the cloud offering for the nature of the, of the, of the SaaS offering, you know, it's built for, for, for one client and deployed to manage and by nature that drives a cost efficiency. But I think what we will show you in the next couple of slides is that you need to look at this holistically. So simply looking at invoicing mandates with irrespective of the country and centralizers only gets you so far. What you then need to kind of consider is, you know, what's the next step of that process? Once I've once I've submitted my data to the tax authorities, there's always a month end process. And, you know, very often companies have very manual processes in terms of reconciling this data, the ability to ensure that all the data sets are fully aligned and that month that month in process can take days and days and days when you bring those efficiencies through the automation now you're starting to have two pillars of your business case now you've got the e-invoicing mandates that you can kind of drive cost efficiencies through a platform and a global approach the second level, you're now starting to accelerate your month-end processes in terms of using technology to automate these processes where you're having people downloading data from the ERP system, downloading the data that's been sent in to the tax authorities, downloading the general ledger, and then in the next cell, uh, somehow trying to reconcile all this. And they do this at the company level. And if you're operating in 50 or 60 countries, you have 50 individuals at month-end trying to do this. Now, once you start to say, okay, look, I'm going to go global, single platform for my invoicing, you get those efficiencies. Then you move to the month-end process. You've got those great efficiencies in terms of streamlining their processes and automating it. And then the third layer is that how do I automate my VAT return, my VAT submission? Now, in many cases, the country are doing that for us. They're kind of saying, if you take Poland, they're saying, well, my VAT return is now needs to be embedded into my JPK file. Norway is going the same way. Spain is now giving a pre-filled VAT return. When you do the three pillars of, of, of uh, the tech, tax technology in terms of the invoicing, the month-end acceleration, and then the VAT return, then you're starting to build a very serious business case by automating that. And we can give you an example how it can work. But thank you, Steve. Um, so for her, if you could just go back one slide, I'll just spend 30 seconds just to explain to the audience what, um, what Texera is. So what Texera is a little bit about is basically a cloud native platform. So this is not code that's been moving to the cloud, it's been pre-built on the SAP cloud. Um, it is pre-built end-to-end and that's funded, fundamentally different to what uh, um, um, what's out there in the market in that we build everything from the beginning to the end. If you're, in, if you're pulling data out or pushing data out of your source system, we provide that native integration from your system into Taxera. We transform that data and we send that to the tax authorities. That entire pipeline, including the pre-building to the tax authorities, delivered to Taxera. So you're not buying software licenses, you are in fact buying a software application, tax technology that does your process end-to-end. -end. 
This is not where you need to build the integration from your SAP or your Oracle system or your IFS system or JDS into Taxera. We already provide that integration. We've connected two systems and the data starts to flow. We transform that data, all the transformation, all the validation rules are pre-built inside Taxera. We configure it for, for our specific clients. Everybody uses their system slightly different. Uh, that is a very rapid process and we are exchanging data to the tax authorities for every country that's in scope. So that all that integration is done automatically. This is not a six months project to build all these different pipes. It's built out of the box. And the last but not least point is that we are responsible for maintaining the compliance of the system. So if Spain changes its laws or Colombia changes its laws, the transformation rules, the validation rules sit in the Taxera IP. We take care of that for our clients. Of course, you have to test, you make sure it works under your conditions, but we take care of that to ensure that you are in this fast moving regulatory environment. It's done for you. So this is the Texera offering. And we can just share a couple of uh, the, the applications that we've got uh, for our clients. This is the single uh, global operations dashboard. And this is used by our clients for what we call um, a B2G operation. So if you're exchanging data, in this case, the screenshot you see here is the Spanish tax authorities. The data is pulled out of your system in line with the regular, regulatory requirements. It's tracked. Uh, there's a status management in, in, in every screen and any data exchanges are done with through a single screen. So where if you are sending data for Italy or Spain or Mexico, you don't have to have different applications. You merely switch the country that you want to operate in. If you have the security access, then you just carry out your job. There's no additional software to be implemented. You don't need ACR or uh, e-document compliance. You just use a Taxera platform to manage those global submissions from a single web application. The application itself is uh, we are an SAP partner is hosted in the SAP business technology platform. So you have that peace of mind that you're really dealing with a, with a, with a with a professional organization, but from our side and SAP perspective. And in terms of the infrastructure where your data is stored, you are, all our clients have a choice whether they want to use uh, uh, Amazon, AWS, or any of the competition. So that's that's kind of um, the infrastructure lay. And as you know, those all world-class companies. And um, the, in, in terms of the user experience, the design of the platform is very consistent. And you'll see for the next screens, we really ensure that the, the, the user experience is very, very similar, which makes the process and the user um, ability to, to learn the platform and stay up to date with the, with the regulatory requirements much easier. This is not that uh, the safety or B2G or VAT returns look fundamentally different. The look and feel for the tax function is very, very similar. So if we can go to the to the second screen, please, for him. Uh, this one, uh, uh, we provide a, a out-of-the-box application for all our clients. This is where, uh, in real time, uh, a, any person from that's got access to the system is able to reconcile the data for, for that company code or for any, for any data range. So without having to download information, you simply click on the, your reconciliation button. The system uh, aligns the, the, the two systems, you tell you if there's any differences and it identifies if there's a timing difference, generally speaking, the timing difference between, for example, extracting the data and, and what's sitting in Taxera, the user can run the reconciliation at any point in time from anywhere in the world, identify those differences and merely by, by clicking the extraction button, the system automatically aligns the two. It pulls out any documents that are not in Taxera, ensures that they're coming to Taxera and submits them to the relevant tax authority. So again, this is a very automated process. There's no need for, for any downloads or data manipulation. It ensures that the data is aligned at all times. It reconciles and you kind of move to a real-time accounting. This is a, a much greater concept in a, a lot more complex in terms of our smart data reconciliation hub. Um, this is where we really believe makes a difference to the acceleration of the month end, reducing your, your risk management and then reconciling multiple data sets. And what this application is able to do is to reconcile your VAT return against your general ledger against the data that you may have submitted to the, to the tax authorities 
In this example, it's the, the Spanish tax authorities that have been consistent to share that. So, you know, I, I alluded earlier on that, you know, these processes are very, very manual. In most organizations, you know, again, with a, with a single click of the button, you, the data is reconciled. Any documents that are in one data set in the other are actually highlighted for you, all the way to document level. You're then able to analyze that, investigate why there's a difference between the three data sets, and rather spending days and days uh, reconciling this data, this is now takes place in under 30 seconds. And one of the key uh, benefits of this, this um, the Smart Data Reconciliation Hub, we highly recommend to our clients that they run this before they submit the VAT return to ensure that when you are submitting your VAT return, you are 100% aware and, and in agreement that um, what you are sending to the tax authorities with that VAT return, if it is not part of something like Poland uh, and, and these, these um, VAT returns that have been embedded into the technology, that they can reconcile, they can analyze. These reconciliations are saved at a very high level in our cockpit because we do not, we store very minimal data sets, uh, what we call a metadata approach. So we don't store clients' data on our system. All the, all the key data such as a amounts and any sensitive data is not stored in our platform. It is done um, and retrieved in real time. It means that before you submit anything to the tax authorities from a reconciliation hub, it's all agreed. You in charge, you save it so that you move to the next screen and you actually execute your VAT return from the platform, which is then linked into your ERP system. You know that your data is reconciled. You execute your VAT return. You can display all your line items. You can display the VAT return in the, in the form of that country where it's applicable. And then you can actually trigger that posting of the VAT return into your core system. Um, that is an important difference to make because we just trigger the posting. We do not do transactions from within Taxera. And this again just means that all your data is reconciled. It's integrated to your various sources. Um, and one of the key features, and there are many others which I like to always uh, mention to our, to our audience, is that, um, you know, from experience, very often it's difficult to pull out these historical VAT returns. If, if your auditors or somebody wants to look at what was submitted last month or three months ago or two years ago, one of the functionality we have with our real-time data mechanism is that historical returns are available in real time anywhere. And again, you don't need to be in your office. You can do this from anywhere in the world. And then just to wrap up before we, we go back to, to Steve for the last uh, quick wrap up, um, you know, the unique benefits of having a cloud platform, you know, you can start small in scale as you need. There's no need to do a big bang deployment. Um, the implementation of this because of our pre-build and our pre-integration pre approach is days and weeks rather than months. So a country so, from you know, a small country can be done in less than two weeks. We have zero intrusion on your IT landscape, which meaning there's no programs, there's no conflict to your existing landscape. Um, you can carry on your business process as you choose, and then Taxera takes care of the rest. You know, the, the metadata model, we, we spoke about that additional uh, security layer, which uh, was expressed as a concern early on. Our clients take up to that globally because we take care of that. And uh, we also have a digital boardroom, you know, where uh, we haven't showcased that today. We have pre-built um, dashboards and insights for, for the tax function. And um, the last two points, one is that there are no, no additional software licenses. You merely have a software as a service fee which means uh, it's kind of you pay one fee and you don't need to, to incur any further costs. And last but not least, what we believe is the key feature is if you have a single global tax platform in the cloud. So thank you all very much. And Steve, back to you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for answer. Uh, yeah, just uh, summarizing. I, I know everyone's on a, on a tight uh, uh, close. Um, we, we looked at an end-to-end -end from dirty data to filing with the tax authorities. Uh, uh, that's that's what I call end-to-end -end number one. End-to-end -end number two is where, when you also can connect it with the validation process behind the digital mailbox and the exchange of, of information by tax authorities amongst uh, governments. And that's the, the what I call end-to-end -end number two. So today, I, I think uh, we, we saw an, an expression on, on how to this end-to-end -end solution number one is already in, in place in, the, in, in practice. 
and uh, eliminates a lot of the hurdles uh, which in-house people are struggling with uh, today. Uh, again, make or buy comes with uh, wise and uh, serious criteria to be developed. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, Taxera is, uh, is, uh, is part of that game on end-to-end -end solutions. So again, thanks very much for joining our, uh, our event. There will be um, uh, another five, six sessions uh, during this, uh, this fall um, and a few uh, early next year. So please keep tuned and, and follow our uh, registration and uh, LinkedIn connections uh, to, uh, to also drop by on the other occasions. So thanks again and um, you uh, enjoy your day. And thanks, Paul. Thanks for- uh, Thank you for organizing again. Thank okay. you for having us, Steve. Thank you, bye-bye. You're welcome. Take care. Take care, bye-bye, uh, everyone. This uh, ends the, uh, the session of today. Enjoy your day.